Hi, I'm Kim and this is my integrated technology project. Before commencing the project, I would ensure students have filled out the safety workbook. This will take them through aspects of using the scissors, the machines and any other tools which are sharp and could cause harm. When pinning the pattern pieces onto the denim, I would take great care, as denim is very thick and it can be hard for the pins to push through the denim. Cutting around the patches takes great care, and I would ensure students know how to properly cut, moving their scissors around in the direction away from their body. Once all the materials have been cut, it is time to sew. I've started with the denim weaving. I've used an industrial machine because of the thickness of the denim and I've also used a thicker stitching thread. When using an industrial machine, it goes faster, so I would ensure the students know the safety procedures when using these machines, ensuring they keep their hands away from the needle so there are no injuries. When weaving the denim, I've created a one by one weave. The denim overlaps each other one by one. I've top stitched on each side of the strip to keep them flat so no cutlery gets caught. I've continued the weaving process and I'm top stitching around each strip to ensure that they stay flat. I'm now pinning my woven patches and my square patches onto a piece of backing fabric. This will help to stabilize the patches while I sew. I'm sewing close to the edges of the square patches to ensure a flat surface. I sewed the patches on using a shorter stitch length so I could get around the corners easily. For the prototype I decided to cut a piece of wadding to see if this would benefit my final product and create more stability. The wadding created too much bulk and there was too much of a step up at the edges of my placemat, which could create instability and cause spillages as the cups could be placed near the edge. The prototype turned out to my liking, but I did notice there was quite a step between the thickness in the patches and the woven patches. So I decided for the final product, I would place denim underneath where just the square patches would be placed. So both patches would have two layers of fabric. This would ensure my place mats would be even and stable. So no spills will occur from crockery falling over. Using a denim fabric behind the patches would also allow me to line up the patches right next to each other rather than overlap them slightly. This would ensure further evenness and more stability. I also noted in my prototype the stitching from the square patches was too close to the edge. This could cause denim to fray and cause holes in the placemat. This could inhibit functionality and also lower the lifespan of the product. I decided to change the stitching of the applique to a decorative blanket stitch so it would be a neater finish. When making the final product, I used exactly the same materials and tools, but added in a rotary cutter. Using the backing fabric to stabilize my patches, was a good idea. It allowed me to get evenness across all the placemats between both layers of the patches. For the squares on the final project, I used a pattern piece as I needed to cut many squares and I wanted to ensure they were all similar size. Using a rotary cutter to cut the strips means I would have to cover this with the students. This can be very dangerous and I would ensure each student would know the proper ways to use the rotary cutter. Laying up the denim squares and the strips at the same time allowed me to evenly distribute each different denim so I had an aesthetically pleasing outcome. Doing this allowed my projects to have balance and harmony.
Using the backing fabric to lay the strips and squares onto helped me to secure the patches in an even and flat manner. It allowed me to easily and quickly sew the patches and strips all at the same time. The outcome was very neat and tidy and having all edges sewn at a 5mm seam allowance created a uniform and balanced project. After assessing the finish I decided to add a zigzag stitch to the joins of the patches. This would ensure that no cutlery would get caught on any edges. This added zigzag stitch would help to create a more functional placemat. Using my sketches to lay up the applique pieces helped to ensure they were in the correct position and the correct sizing. Changing the technique of the stitch for the applique to a blanket stitch ensured I got a nice clean finish. When pressing and using the steam function, it can create severe burns. I would ensure that this would be covered in the handbook and ensure that students are aware of the dangers from the steam. Pressing the edges helps to finish the project and create a smooth seam. Before bagging out the edge, I ensured that each measurement of the placemat was even so that at the end, all four placemats would be the same size. After bagging out the placemats, it's important to use the iron to make sure that the backing is at the back and it does not wrap around to the front. When fraying the edge of the strip, the fibres started to tangle at about 1cm, so I decided this was going to be the new width of the frayed edge. I attached the frayed edge using the domestic machine with the zigzag function to ensure that the edges would not fray. I finished the edges with a 5mm top stitch using the industrial machine and the thick beige top stitching thread. This gives a professional finish and helps to keep the edges nice and flat. I'm very happy with the final outcome and the changes I've made such as the zigzag stitching to hold the edges down so they don't fray was a good move in ensuring that the final placemats would be functional and long lasting. The only addition in hindsight may be a shape well inside to keep the placemats even stiffer.